Geek Vibes Live is rated G for Geek. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to another awesome episode of Geek Vibes Live Review. For tonight's episode, I'm your host, Tia, and I have with me my awesome co-host for this evening, Jawan. How are you tonight? I am really good, actually, and I am glad that we are doing this review because we both kind of, not sped through, but got through a uh, Season two of Altered Carbon pretty quickly, so I'm glad that we're reviewing it while it's all still fresh in my head. Absolutely, and I was going to say that you and I got together, I believe, a week, a week and a half ago to do the review for Narcos Mexico season two, and we're doing now the review for Altered Carbon season two, and I'm really interested, and we'll get to it in just a sec. So I'm really interested to see the shift of our energy because we really love Narcos Mexico season two. We did a phenomenal job with that review. And so we then watched Altered Carbon season two. It just came out on Netflix. Of course, anyone who's listening, this review will be filled with spoilers. So if you haven't fully watched it yet and you don't like spoilers, then I suggest going to watch it and listening to us, obviously. But the Netflix came out with its second season, and it is pretty much a lot new, a new main character, new world that it's on. And it has the freedom to do that because it's a sci-fi show. Um, It's based on these books by Richard Morgan, and it's all about, um, you know, in the future, death is essentially something that doesn't really exist because you have the ability to change bodies, or as they are called, sleeves. Now, Joel Kinnaman played the main character, Takeshi Kovach, in the first season. And I have praised the first season of Alter Carbon up and down. Anytime on the top ten we do say, a top 10 Netflix shows, a top 10 sci-fi shows, top 10 shows of 2017, Altered Carbon season one is always on it because I can't rave enough about it. Um, And obviously, I was super excited about season two, um, even though it was with Anthony Mackie instead of Joel Kinnaman. I was like, regardless, um, I'm pumped for the show because I love the world and the mythos that it kind of surrounds. And um, I'll get into my opinions in a sec, but let's just start right off with general thoughts. Jawan, what were coming out of season one? What were your thoughts of season two? Um, Well, I'm not a big Anthony Mackie fan. Um, So my expectations were for like, the side characters to really carry it um, this season. Um, Anthony Mackie, to me, seems very one-dimensional. Um, he doesn't really seem like he has much range to him. Um, and, you know, this obviously is purely just my opinion. I'm not saying it as if it's factual. Um, but, I mean, as I watch the season, I'm like, his emotions seemed uh not different than when he was happy and then his happy didn't seem too different than when he was angry like it was just all one beat um and it really took a took a lot away from me and i will say this honestly on air i'm not a big joel kidderman fan but that guy has range i i you know when you watch the first season um you know again spoiler alert when he killed his sister uh takashi kovac killed his sister all the emotion was there when he was uh, holding her, crying, singing to her. Like, that's emotion right there. Um, like, I felt that. I was like, God damn. Like, Tia might be on to something. Joel Kinnaman might be a really good actor. Um, and, you know, I just, I felt all that. I felt the anger. I felt the betrayal. Um, you know, I felt when he was really happy, when he was really sarcastic, when he was just being an a-hole. And... What Joel Kinnaman did uh, a thousand times better than Anthony Mackie was a badass. 
see it. I, I immediately go to that scene where he was breaking out of that, not a mental uh, place, but that place where that guy was um, torturing him in his mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and he walked out, and the fat guy was like, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. And he just shot him in the face and then ripped his head off. Like, that, that whole sequence of him blowing up the place, it was so badass. And I'm like, this is action. I just didn't feel that from Anthony Mackie's Takashi Kovac um, this season. Um, and that, to me, was a letdown. Because to me, whenever I'm watching something that's action-driven, I don't usually need my action shows or movies to be great story-driven shows. So I don't really come into it going, oh, that better be a good story. I just need really good action. And this season kind of felt like a decent story. Not the best action. Um, so, I mean, and then we'll we'll get to it, but then a lot of the later season became confusing. Um, mm-hmm. I will say this to you, because I know you're just going to yell at me all episodes, so I want to get it out early. I'm not a huge Simone uh, Mystic. I, I think that's how you pronounce her, her last name. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of her. I thought she was very one – excuse me. Um, I thought Luke Cage just had a lot of those characters as one beat. Like, that's just how they were written. And then I saw this, and I'm like, she's acting almost exactly the same as she did in Luke Cage. And it just put me off completely. Um, but no, I thought some of the other characters, I mean, we, we spoke about this before, but I don't want to get too ahead of myself. Um, Post it out to us this year, um, or this season, this year, this season. Um, I think they di- definitely missed out on not bringing back Ortega and Elliot. I thought those just would have mm-hmm. been great additions to the team. Like, I think this show, if it's going to continue past this season, like let's say it goes five, six seasons, it needs a core team. Um, I like the digger. Um, I'm trying to remember her name. She is beautiful, if I may add. Um, oh, Dig 301. Um, she she is going to be an interesting piece going forward um, with Poe. I thought she was really good. Um, Danica uh, Harlan, I really enjoyed her also. I told you before, I have a huge crush on her from uh, the show Power. Um, that's why I can't wait for American Gods Season 3 to see yeah. her again. Um, oh, wait, that's her? Oh, no, no, I, I really liked her this season. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, it, 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 it's her. She'll be in a, America. You know what? I, I laugh because when I, when I started to watch the season and I saw her, I'm like, I thought she was supposed to be on American Gods. Like, maybe she's on both. So I checked it out, and I'm like, okay, she is on both. Um, but I'm a huge fan of hers. Um, but who I am going to say really surprised me, Tia, that I wish we got a lot more of because I had so much fun watching her character is Lizzie Elliott. Um, I freaking love Lizzie. I love Lizzie. Um, And I don't know if we're going to get a lot more of her going forward, but I'm down. I am so down. Um, I really enjoyed what they did with with Lizzie's character, but um, I feel like I've talked enough. (laughs) I'm going to pass it back to you. (laughs) <laughs> I, I was going to say, I have so many things I want to comment on that you were saying. First of all, that fight scene in season one is one of my favorite scenes because truly Takeshi with uh, Joel Kinnaman, Takeshi comes out, he kills all those people, and he has a little pink unicorn backpack on. And then you see him later, uh, yes. at, and you see him <laughs> later at Poe's establishment. And I don't know if you catch it, but he, he kisses it. He kisses the little backpack before he goes to bed. And to me, it's like those were the little things about Takeshi that I love because he was a badass. He had, uh, you know, I guess you want to say some anger issues. He certainly wasn't always the most nicest person to anyone, but he had these little quirks. And Joel Kinnaman was able to really put those quirks uh, to good use. I'm a huge Joel Kinnaman fan. Um, he is really huge, actually, in Sweden, along with the Skarsgård brothers. So I think that he's just been trying to build up his American audience and maybe compared to, say, the Skarsgård, who are more, uh, you know, well-known, especially Alexander. 
Uh, maybe that's why maybe people don't necessarily consider him as much, but this isn't a Joel Kinnaman podcast, but I could probably spend two hours talking about him as well. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> so my expectations for season two were extremely high, extremely high. And this is coming from someone who likes Anthony Mackie, but maybe that's because I've really only ever seen him as Sam Wilson in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I did like him um, alongside Frank Grillo for that Netflix movie, Point Blank. So to me, I was excited because he can be playful, but he really didn't bring any of that playfulness to Takeshi. He was extremely stiff and one-dimensional. And there were times where I, I felt the Takeshi coming out of him. There were many times where I just didn't feel like he was playing him at all. And that really bothered me because there was so much that they could have done with him. But uh, really quick before I go into, say, like some of the negatives, I have to comment that um, the dynamic between Poe and Lizzie was something that was so beautiful in season one. And I love that in season two, they carried that with Poe, that she still meant so much to him that not Mm -hmm. only was he hallucinating her, but at some point when he felt that he may lose his mind, it was Lizzie he says that he would miss the most. It was so beautiful. And his dynamic was, uh, I call her Miss Dig because he always calls her Miss Dig. And as you said, she was gorgeous. That dynamic between them was so wonderful because the two of them got to shine separately, but together they had this really nice team effort and how determined uh, Miss Dig was to not only help the team, but help Poe was something really great that I want. Yeah. And I wanted them to continue focusing on that throughout the season. Because to me, that was so real. And it's so funny because there are these two characters who are AIs. They're not humans, but they were the most human characters they, in the season. They were. They were. And I, I almost, almost, I, I won't say it on air that I fully did, but I almost cried when um, they were forcing the information out of Dig. Um, oh, yeah. And she was trying her best not to give it. Um, and, you know, she started crying because she's like, she's all she wants to serve a purpose. So she's like, I don't want to finally get my purpose and then I fail like I let everyone down um so she's trying her best to hold it like not letting any information out I believe they tried their best to wipe her as quickly as they could um but they left some information in there and you're just seeing her struggle with it and you know to to anyone here who doesn't appreciate art the way that we do they would just go oh whatever but, like, when you really pay attention to what she was saying when um, when Poe first met her, of we serve no purpose here, <laughs> you know? Like, we had a purpose, um, you know, you know, we're, we're searching for a pur- Digging is our, pur- our, our purpose. I, I think it was something along the lines of that. Um, so to see her kind of, like, you know, with actual humans that they kind of deem to be kind of a little worthless and useless, um finding her purpose with this new team and it's funny because every time I watch the CW I'm like I'm so sick of large teams like consolidated to three people I am good with three people but this show I'm kind of like I don't mind a group of five like I think I'd be okay with a group of five like I could live with it I'm okay with it um but yeah, I, I freaking love Dig. Like you're gonna hear me talk more about Dig before the end of this <laughs> this podcast. But I just wanted to add how much that that one scene meant, um, with her trying to hold everything in and seeing that little one tear come down. Um, she just did a great job portraying that. That's a wonderful scene as well. Um, it very much reminds me. And you'll get into this when you start watching West world but it's very much like that because in Westworld they're hosts and you know essentially robots and they'll be speaking and then the human will say you know okay uh, you know your basic fun- functions now you know and then 
they're forced to give that information because it's the command. So it's like no matter how human they act, they still are technology that can be manipulated by humans. So that um, scene with her was absolutely wonderful. So we had all this great emotion between Poe. And I, I don't know the actress's name for Miss Dig, but I know that Poe is played by Chris Connor. Um, and I have to just give him props because he really was the standout for me. I didn't get that emotion. Got it. So, what is it? Um, Dina Shahabi. Dina Shahabi. Okay. Yeah. Was she? Yep. Was she the Punisher or something like that? I feel no, like no. But guess what? She wasn't. And you're gonna laugh when I tell you. Was it Jack Ryan? Yes, and guess what? What? Daredevil. That's what it is. That's what I was confused as if it was either The Punisher or Daredevil Season 3. That's right. She had a scene with Karen. There you go. I knew I liked mm-hmm. her. She was, phen- she was phenomenal <laughs> in Season 1 of Jack Ryan. This is just going to be a podcast about her because she was so good. <laughs> I'm totally okay with that. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah, no, she was fantastic. Definitely, if there's a season three, she needs to come back. But, um, so, and you also mentioned Danica Harley. She was great. She was a phenomenal, like, I don't want to say, like, a bitch, but I loved it how much she was <laughs> like that. Um, just you need that. And especially in this world, because we obviously have seen that since death was essentially eliminated, you have these elite people, they're called mess, and they are very uh, snobby, think better of themselves because they have all this power. And especially her, she's the daughter of Harlan who discovered the world and that's another thing is like while she was great that story of Harlan and how they discovered the planet was so like messy and convoluted and it took me forever to like realize most of the shit that was going on uh so that was one (laughs) thing um see I I like I guess It wasn't necessarily that I like Simone Missick's character. I just love that the show effortlessly portrayed a same-sex relationship. And so I I think I appreciate that, that it wasn't made of any big deal of. It was just so there. But I did find myself at times looking at her character and wondering to myself, is she playing this character? like she played Misty Knight. Um, granted, I think that Misty Knight was a little more, say, exaggerated at some point, but she did play it a little like that. And tell me, Joan, it took me forever to realize that those things in her hair weren't just barrettes. She was like, my coils. Yeah. And I was like, oh, they're supposed to be part of her. I thought they were just a cool hair piece. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely thought they were like barrettes. I'm like, that's a weird-ass place to put them. Like, four long ass barrettes just in the the side of your head like that like I don't know I guess I I, I don't know I'd never use barrettes um, well it's so the future like, you know so, so it, they weird. have weird fashion choices <laughs> it was yeah, it was, was definitely weird <laughs> so that was strange and it took me a while to realize that those actually had a function and that too just seemed so it seems far-fetched it didn't even seem like she believed that those things are functional. So why should we as the audience believe that they're functional? That was strange. And I like the idea of like the synth sleeves. They touched upon those in season one, but I felt like they showed more in season one that they were fake. Like we saw in season one, one synth real, uh, actually be able to, control and manipulate the the look actually too yeah the look of their bodies because they were synth but they didn't do that and I'm wondering did they not have as big a budget this season 
Um, we were talking about in pre-show that there was eight episodes as opposed to ten. I'm wondering if money was cut for some reason, but it that whole thing was unbelievable. And I will tell you, that was ridiculous, but let me tell you the things that I really thought was ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, I'm laughing even thinking about it, and I feel like it was so thrown in there and so unnecessary when they said that the body that Takeshi was in, Anthony Mackey's, was spliced with canine DNA. I, I laughed all the yeah. time. Yeah. Like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really like I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I was a little offended, I, and I'm not saying they, they, they meant it this way. I was a little offended that your black sleeve is part dog. I was like, all right. I'm curious what the writing department was thinking here. Because I honestly never saw, like, any of that come into play, like him using uh, canine no. senses or anything like that. So I'm like, all right, why did you just say that this black sleeve was <laughs> Was part dog. What, what? Like, what does that have to do with anything? Like, can he do something different than any other sleeve? And then they're like, they oh, only... the really cool thing is he could summon guns. I'm like, what? Yes, yeah, the magnetic <laughs> hands. I'm like, what? You splice them with, with K9 DNA, and the best thing he could do is summon guns? All right. Okay. I guess. Yeah. I guess. That was ridiculous, because then I'm starting to think, what is it about the guns, right? Is does he yeah. have the elevator in his hands, like stick to an elevator? It's like, hang on, I gotta pull my hand yeah. off. Hang on for a second. Like, <laughs> no, you, you are right though, because the whole canine DNA thing didn't serve any purpose other than for that guy Carrera to have that whole line of, you know, what happens when you kick a dog, it comes back to you. You know, what happens when you kick a wolf, and it's like, oh, this is so cheesy. It's so bad. Very. You know, just, I was just like, um, it, it 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 made no sense. Like I was like, what's the payoff here? You, you made him part canine for for what? Like I don't even remember. And again, I could be forgetting. Uh, me, I think me and you only gave this one one watch, like one watch through. Did, yeah. you, did you go back and watch? Only one watch through. So we may have missed something. Um, but I don't recall him going. The the canine in me is how I'm able to you know hunt down people or track people or something like that it was just like what was the payoff like why i mean i'll even go a step further tia since you're talking about stuff that um that that bothered you um i didn't really get why after he survived season one he decided to be a female singer like i was like all right um <laughs> i did laugh at that i was like okay Takeshi just really like have a desire to sing but he knew that whatever sleeve he was in didn't really have the capacity to sing so he's like i want to be this jazzy uh female singer in the beginning that was a little a little interesting i mean i've read that say in the book because she has been a woman before that's not something that was yeah no out of the realm a, a woman isn't Sorry, what <laughs> Isn't what I thought was weird. Him just becoming a singer, like yeah, <laughs> was, you can't imagine Takeshi doing that. <laughs> no, I mean, after everything Joel Kinnaman set up in the first season, I feel like they were just like, eh, we're just gonna kind of throw all that to the wall, and it was like we're gonna make Takashi like very weird, and I'm like, I, I don't, I don't really know if I like any of these changes. Like they're a little too weird. Um, but, yeah, no, I mean, we'll definitely get to this before we, we wrap up, but I even told you for next season I would love for the main sleeve to be a woman. So um, yeah. I definitely had no issues with that. I just thought it was weird that I'm watching the start of this episode or the start of this season, and I'm like, wait, what? He, he was the singer. Why? <laughs> like, it was... like, I get I get you wanted to stay, like, you know, under the radar or whatever, but it was like I'm sure there were better ways to do that could have went into like an old man sleeve and just like lived on a farm or something somewhere like <laughs> I don't think becoming a singer is is under the radar as you think I mean didn't Simone Missick's character kind of figure out that that was him like rather quickly very quickly yeah so I'm like all right this is weird <laughs> it was definitely 
really a weird choice that because at first when they started off this the season, I thought, oh, this is cool. It's setting up. Uh, if you listen to the lyrics of what she's singing, it you know it comments on everything that's going on. But then when you realize that it's Takeshi, you're sitting there going, Takeshi wouldn't sing. He'd be so pissed off if someone was like, get up there and sing. He'd say, no, fuck you, pretty much. But um, exactly. It it was weird, and I missed the dynamic of Joel Kinnaman with Ortega and Elliot. Like, the episode where, and I will say that I kind of thought this was cool, how they were getting the soldiers to be sleeves of those in his memory, so you had Ortega come back. And it reminded me of how fantastic Ortega was. And I even love that she kind of did that whole, oh, I like the arm that you gave me. Because I almost forgot about the arm. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is cool. This is cool callback. But it did that very infrequently. And there was one callback that I missed almost until I was like, oh, wait, okay. Um, and again, we're like skipping, but that's kind of what I feel like this show did itself. But so you have the so you have the main bad guy, Carrera, right? Who I kind of thought was cool. I thought he was a decent bad guy. Nothing compared to um in the first season, right? The uh the Dimmy twins played by Tom O'Penniket and Michael Ecklin. They did a fantastic mm-hmm. job. They were really like sick and demented. So it felt like Carrera was like this season version of that but then you find so he i thought he was pretty decent right he was like torturing that one woman pulling out her teeth which was messed up but you expect that from this show because literally in the season before you had joel kinnaman's character getting his like legs sawed off and set on fire and shit um and he seemed cool but even towards the end i felt like they muddied up his uh his storyline but then they said they went even further to say that he, in fact, was actually this guy Jaeger, who essentially took Takeshi in when Takeshi was a child and ended up killing his father, his abusive father. And the whole reason why Carrera holds such a grudge against Takeshi is some sort of weird, like, fatherly hurt. Tell me that. It got weird once it was revealed what his true intentions were, and then he just became weirdly, like, obsessed, like, continuously calling him son, I raised you, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Am I the only one who thought that was just really strange? Uh, No. I I mean, I, I didn't think he was a good villain, mainly because he kept switching up. Like, you were, you're this soldier that's willing to do anything, but when you find out that the person that hired you is, you know, doing some underhanded stuff, you go, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, I, even I have limits. And it's like, where? Like, where have you shown that you have limits? Oh, yeah. Like, you, you just pulled all those all those ladies' teeth out. You just tried to kill him um, by, you know, in form of interest. Where are your boundaries here? Um, I mean, and then he gets really, like, sorry to interrupt, but then he gets no, really – then he gets really like crazy when he sees that Danica is putting those people on rockets. He's like, no, no. And that's the same woman who you were torturing. Yeah. I'm like, I, I'm not really understanding it. And then like, I, I didn't really understand. I'm going to be fair with you to you. I didn't really like the motivation of his sister in season one. Um, mm-hmm. it, it played out fine. It, it, it played out fine. It was a fine ending. Um, you know, the person I could bring him down is the person closest to him. I just, I don't ever like the dynamic of, I love you so much. I can't afford to let you love anyone else. Like, I didn't really like that. Like, I, I understood it during the flashbacks because it's like, it seems like he's forgetting about her and he's more, you know, in tune with, uh, what's going on with the group, um, and, you know, the uh, whatever her name is that he was falling in love with. So I'm like, all right, I get that. But present day, I'm like, what? <laughs> like, it was a little incestual. You, 
yeah, I'm like, all right, this is weird. Like, I didn't even think he loved Ortega like that. I'm like, I'm pretty sure you guys could live very comfortably as like a family and everything would be fine. Like, why are you being so crazy? <laughs> like, that was my whole thought as I was watching the end of it. I'm like, why is she being so crazy? Like, she does know, like, you could just be a happy family again. Like, I don't think he was looking to go anywhere. I think she would have kept him there. Um, but I don't mean to go all the way back. I, I brought that up to say, I don't really think their strong suit is their villains. I think what you're going to have to do going forward is um, get bigger names for your villains. Um, and this is a show that looks like it has freedom. So I'm like, go do something wild, like bring in Jason Statham as a villain. Um, do do something crazy. Like um, one of the guys here that I was like, I would love to see as a visionary for this show, that the way you could tie it in is, um, her father, uh, the the big bad of this season, her father, you could say um, she had a brother. You know who the brother could be to you? And you would love this. Um, mm-hmm. The guy from uh, from, from Ant-Man, the, uh, the villain from Ant-Man, bring him Corey in. Corey Stoll. And have, yes, Corey Stoll, and have him come in and, you know, maybe do a little bit of fighting. Um, you know, fighting also, I think that's something that we lack this season, really. Um, have him do a little bit of fighting, but have him be more of a mental big bad. Um, like he's coming in to assume the throne. Um, you know, he wants to build his own army, something like that. Like, don't be afraid to go after bigger names to be these villains, because honestly, I think that's where this season really lacks. I'm kind of like, I love her. Um, but I'm like, she's someone that you use as like, um, like if you're doing a movie, she would be your minor villain. And then someone else would be your major villain. And I think the problem with this season was you had two minor villains um, that stretched throughout the entirety of the season. And I'm kind of like, uh, no, <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Um, get one really good villain um, that is your villain throughout the entire season. Mads Mickelson, go get Mads Mickelson. Like, there's so many great oh, yeah. guys that could be good villains. That I'm sure, like, I don't think Mads Mickelson would frown on doing Ultra Carbon Season 3. Uh, I know Netflix could afford him. So I'm like, go out and don't afraid to make some big splashes out there. Make this show, like, if you're going to go crazy, like, we're going to get into it. But if you're going to go crazy and do dragons and shit like that, don't be afraid to go crazy with your casting. Um, switch it up. Said, make make a Kovach next season uh, a woman all season. Um, you know, just switch it up, make it more interesting, you know, make it more dynamic. Um, I just think that that was my biggest issue with the two big bads um, this season, that they both felt like minor villains that were given a major villain role, and neither one of them really thrived in it. And I love, because you know I love Corey Stoll. There's so, like, he's one of the core actors that I want to see in everything. Um, I've never watched the show Billion, but they just released a trailer and he's in the fifth season. I'm like, God damn, am I going to have to watch four seasons of the show just to prepare to watch season <laughs> five? Because shit, I'm going to watch season five. Uh, so that was, that's a great, uh, like completely awesome idea. I also, if I'm like thinking about what I would have liked to see this season, you know, instead of going to Harlan's world or whatever, like, you have Ortega, right? And she's living her life with uh, Joel Kinnaman. I forget who he, like, because, you know, that was a, an actual person. That was her, like, fiancé and everything. I forget his name. Right. Like, you, but you have them. And then they need to, like, team up with Takeshi. And then Ortega's, like, all, like, conflicted a little, you know. And then, you know, he. Joel Kinnaman's character is like, hey, I, I can fight myself, you know, like, I'm a, a freaking cop, I know what I'm doing, you know, because she's like, yeah, okay, you know, blah, 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 but then, you know, teaming up together, I don't know, that would have been freaking cool, but, you know, Joel Kinnaman, in real life, is like a black belt or some shit, right, and so I think that's why his, like, fighting scenes just, they stuck so much, you know, they stuck so well, they were so much better, we didn't really get these, like, epic fight scenes in season two. I mean, we had – I'm looking back, and 
really one of the only like action action scenes we had was that we had seen with Carrera and all his people like tossing the the single gun to each other I guess to stage that uh, only one gun was used or something like that but you know right. really that was the only action action scene we got um, and with you commenting say on having two smaller villains it's because I think the big villain, quote unquote, was supposed to be the whole elders thing and the weird freaking dragon that came out at the end, but that didn't stick. Um, and that whole thing was convoluted because now they brought back Quilcrest. Because we have to talk about Quilcrest. She's the mo- she was the motivation, not so much, I guess, the motivation in season one, because at that point. Takeshi thought that she was dead, but she was always there in his heart. So then he obviously finds out at the end of season one, hey, she's not dead, which seems a little bit like a uh, a cheat to kind of be like, she's not dead. We backed her up somewhere, but that is this type of world. They can do that. Um, so then in season two, his whole mission is to find her. And they never really explained it properly, but I got the feeling that a really large amount of time had gone by. I think like 30 years has gone by between the first season and the second season because they, Takeshi and Poe have like traversed around the universe. They've been in many, many different sleeves. They've been tracking things back and forth and they get to Harlan's world where suddenly there's all these they made it, okay, they were like, okay, Takeshi's the last envoy, right? And they made it seem mm-hmm. pretty much like, they made it seem like pretty much that whole thing was just in the history books. And then they introduced that there's all these modern day cult members of hers that are like, you know, Viva La, uh, Quilcrest, and shit like that. But I, and I told you this, I didn't like her. I didn't like her in season one, I didn't like her character. Um, to me, I was kind of like, yeah, if I were Ray, I would have, who's the sister, I would have walked away from that too. But that cult was nuts. Uh, and then yeah, the Keshi sure. was just, the Keshi was just such an awe of her. And then in season two, she's back. And I just, that, that whole thing I didn't like. I didn't think she played that part very well. I didn't like the storyline. And then she didn't know who she was and blah, blah, blah. How did you feel about that? Because I certainly, I was a little bummed out to know that she was having a bigger role in season two just because I didn't like her in season one. Um, I I think when you have a world where death is something that is eludable, um, I don't even think that's a word, but it's a word now, but um, (laughs) death being eludable, uh, um, I think you open up yourself to something like, oh, we just had her on ice. And it's like okay. Um, so I mean, when you when you hear stuff like that, you kind of go, "Well, his sister when she died last year." I know I keep going back to it, but I really freaking loved um, uh, her art towards the end, and I think she's beautiful. Um, yeah, I'm like she had like a thousand different bodies that were like attacking Ortega, and you're telling me she didn't back herself up, like she wasn't smart enough to think she could be killed. Um, so I'm like, I can see it now to her next. Oh, oh. Well, no. that was. <laughs> I have to. I have to interrupt you really quick. That was another thing, and we'll get into it in a second because I have. But when they were like, "Oh, she wanted to be killed," and I'm like, "Rit, no, no, I, I don't yeah, like I don't that at that. all. I don't, I don't like, like that, that at all. all. You say she wants. She, you know, there was such just like peace at some point. They're like. Oh, she wanted to be killed. Oh, okay. And I'm like, man, that's your sister. And you're just, like, at peace with the fact that, like, she's dead. Yeah, and, and Anthony Mackie couldn't even really convey that hurt or anything. It kind of just seemed like she was just another girl. When season one, Takeshi was like, that's my sister. That's, you know, my blood and everything. This is, like, the most heartbreaking thing ever. I'm so torn up about this. And you didn't really feel like it was torn up. It's like, ah, my the love of my life is back. Who cares about the sister? But sorry, I just had to interject there. 
No, no, no. I mean, you're a hundred percent correct. I mean, but it, it, to me, I, I kind of don't, what they're doing with this show is the exact reason why, um, like the flip side of this is time travel. It's why I don't like time travel. I don't like it as a story because then you get to just bend the rules. You get to say, because then what will happen is like, let's say if you introduce time travel, right? And it's like, oh, he went back in time and saved his mom. Oh, he went back in time and saved his sister. Then what people are going to look at is, all right, well, now you can just go back in time at any point and save anyone. And that's a wormhole of bad writing. So when you go, oh, she's just been on ice this whole time, it'll have people say, well, why don't more people just back themselves up? you know, in in case they die. And then it's like, well, you know, that's thinking logically. Like, yeah, I mean, everyone, you walk outside and get hit by a spaceship, back yourself up. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think they've explained that it doesn't really work like that. Um, So it just seems like anyone can do it. I mean, some people just are stupid enough not to, but yeah, anyone can do it. So I'm like, a lot of this is just kind of like, I don't like it. Also didn't like, uh, Simone's um, characters, uh, that whole character's arc. Like, I want to find my brother. Did she find out about her brother? And she's kind of like, all right, yeah, no, okay, all right, yeah, you got, you know, he, he died. It's like, wait, what? Like, yeah, I was really there's hoping no payoff. he was going to, there was no payoff. Like, to me, if the whole purpose of her character is to find out something about her brother, why don't you do something creative like, oh, you know, when you know, when he died or got infected or whatever, like, oh, someone uses sleeve and, you know, now she's face to face with her brother's face, but it's not his actual consciousness inside of that sleeve, you know? So it's like, does she want to hurt the sleeve? Cause it's like, it's hurting her brother. Like really get, get creative with it. But when you just kind of go, oh no, 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 he died. Then you could have told me that like eight episodes ago and I didn't need her character. <laughs> like, what was the purpose of that? Like that—that that is no payoff. Um, that's the equivalent of, of going like um, a, a story is about a guy finding his daughter, and it's like six seasons of it. He comes across his daughter, but she's dead. I didn't need six seasons of that. <laughs> Maybe two tops. Two tops found out she's dead in the show. Um, but for you to do a whole season of it, and it's like, oh no, he's dead. Oh my god, like. It's so stupid. Then they, like, it's, it's so annoying. And then they threw in the dad. Like, they had so much of Simone, uh, her character, right? You you showcased her wife and their obvious, you know, sometimes marital problems because, you know, uh, Simone Mystic's character can't stop, you know, bounty hunting, even though it's hurting her wife, Right. Uh, and then you give right. us the sun, and you're telling us the whole backstory with the sun. You're renting out the sleeve because the sun died in a bomb, blah, blah. And then you throw in the dad, right? And the dad was, like, to me, had, like, one of the best, like, stand-up moments, right? Because he, you know, decided yeah. to stand up for his daughter. And then they just, like, killed him really quickly. And then she didn't know about it for, like, five episodes. And then she comes, and then she's just like, everyone get out. And she's like dismissing yeah. everyone. She's dismissing everyone as if she found out like her dog ripped up her couch and she wants to like you know blow a gasket or something. But it's like her dad's dead. I don't know. That that whole like there was so much wrapped around her that didn't pay off. Not at all. And I didn't even like the emotion of the scene. The guy who killed your dad and ripped the stack out is literally standing right in front of you, and you're kind of yeah. like. Just, just get out. Just go. And I'm like, um, no, that doesn't seem to be the emotion you should be portraying right now. You should be trying to kill him right now. Um, I just, I, well, I, I don't know. This season felt very, very, very cheesy. Um, mm-hmm. It kind of felt like one of those cheap January action movies that come out. Um, it, it it did not seem like it came a great season one like it did. Like, you would have thought this was like a spinoff um, rather than a continuation. Like, that's ultimately what it, it really felt like. It just felt so polar uh, opposite of what season one brought. And I don't know if that was purely because Joel Kinnaman. I honestly think season one was just a better story. 
Um, it was yeah. a murder mystery, trying to find out who did it. It was a who did it. And then when you find out, you're like, oh, my God, what? The action was great. Um, you know, it didn't hurt that the people were really good to look at. Um, and then you come to season two, and it's just like, did you not bring the same team from season one, like writing team? Like, did you change your writers? What what happened? Um, well, I just was uh, – go ahead. I'm sorry. And, you know, we're going to keep comparing it to season one, but – as you said, to me, first of all, the, the world didn't look as good. The technology didn't look as good. The action sequences didn't look as good. So the actress who played Ray, right, I don't know her name. Mm-hmm. I'm terrible at this. But she had that one scene where she's literally naked fighting Ortega, right? And it is, like, one of the craziest, most badass scenes. Because first of all, you're like, she's naked. She's battling Ortega, and Ortega's, like, literally fighting for her life, and Ray is just, like, going at her. And that scene was so well choreographed, and you could, like, feel the power from it, and you never felt that at all in this season. And you had so many amazing action sequences. As you said, there's a better story. The actor who played the rich dude in season one, I think, is, a pretty acclaimed actor. So you had maybe better actors or something. I don't know what it is, but speaking about bad writing, as you just said, the other guy, quote unquote, who killed um, uh, Simone Missick's father is Takeshi Kovac. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but the Will Yoon Lee version, who we did see in season one in flashback. But in season one, if you remember, the Dimmy twins, they weren't real twins. They were just the same guy who decided to split himself into two bodies, which is completely illegal. And they talk about that, like, you know, making someone go insane. And then you pretty much just kind of throw that away to bring this other Takeshi version who seems so gung-ho of uh, obeying orders. And then within two seconds of meeting Quellcrest, he completely is willing to, like, throw that all away. And he becomes almost like the, um, like the naive guy who kind of, like, is a rep. I don't know. They, they play him off as if he was just, I don't want to say stupid, because that's not the word I'm looking for, but as if he was a little bumbling compared to everyone else. And that's definitely not how you felt about him in the first season. No, not at all. Not at all. I kind of felt like he went through a Bucky transformation, um, kind of yeah. not really knowing who he was, not knowing what was going on. Um, I, I completely agree with you. Again, it just felt like the writing wasn't the same. And when you think about it, you kind of go, how is that even possible? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how the acting could progressively get worse, but it did. It, it, it did. It did. And that was one of the many things that I thought just wasn't good. But it all alludes to why if you have one singular great villain, because of course, you know, uh, you know, his henchman, uh, you know, his, his number two and then his henchman, when you have that set up, you're good. You're good. You can do so many other things. Tia, we watch Daredevil season three, right? Who are the villains? Mm-hmm. You had two. You had Fisk, and you had um, uh, Bullseye. Not Deadshot. Bullseye. Thank you. Uh, that's all you needed. You didn't even have other yeah. henchmen. It was just it was just those two, and you were <laughs> able to convey a completely good story. Um, so I'm like the fact that this had so many interchangeable pieces. I'm like. Why? Like, you can't have, ultimately, four different villains, right? And then shorten the season. Like, that's not how that's supposed to work. (laughs) You're not supposed to add more and shrink. You're supposed to add more. You're supposed to subtract, and that's why you shrink. And I'm kind of just like, this show can't get out of its own way. Like, that's ultimately what it's come down to, that you're just throwing things at the wall to see what sticks. And that's never good with, with writing. Um, and you bring in two Kovacs. I'm like, no, no. And honestly, Tia, the writing is so bad 
when he knocked when um the real Kovac knocked Anthony Mackie's co- oh, no whatever when Anthony Mackie's Kovac went off the cliff I legit thought that was it like he died that was it and this is the new Kovac that's how bad the writing was here that I legit for a <laughs> second thought that that's exactly how this was gonna go. That's exactly what I thought. I'm like, oh God, what? This but then is the actual so explanation. Stupid. But then the actual explanation was, oh, he was holding on to the cliff, and it's like, how are you able to do that? This body just has reflexes, and it's like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> it, it's funny because when I watched it, I remember I tried to find the positivity in it, but as as I let it it and we're talking about it is I'm finding very little good to say about it I mean even some, like okay going back to Poe who obviously him and Diggs were the standout in this season I can't say anything bad about them at all but I can say that that virtual reality like scene that Poe is in where he was like apparently led by Lizzie, but it wasn't really Lizzie. That was weird because it's like, what was the point of that? To show him looking for Harlan, but Harlan wasn't really there. I fully didn't understand that. But, okay, let me come out with one positive in that scene. It showed that Poe is kind of powerful because remember in that scene when they're like, you're, you know, you can't do anything to something, something, you can't do anything to us specifically, blah, 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 blah. He's like, okay, he's like, but I have a glitch, and I'm kind of defective, so that means I can make you guys defective. And he just, like, touches, yeah. like, and everything starts, like, going haywire. And I'm like, Poe is a lot more powerful than we think he is, but because he's such a good guy, he would never, you know, really use that. But that would be interesting to see him do something like take down a whole freaking city from like the inside because he's just at that level now. Like someone hurt, like if someone hurt Lizzie or hurt Big and him just really just going off the deep end. Like I want to see Punisher style Poe. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Poe's capable of uh, of going that far. Of becoming Punisher Poe. No. I do like that hashtag. Hashtag Punisher Poe. Um, <laughs> but no. No, I, I agree with you. That was the one bright light in, in that confusion of a um, of a scene. Uh, but again, it's, I, I, I can't say it enough. It's just this season was full of a lot of bad writing. Um, which is unfortunate because I wanted it to do, you know, I want it, not wanted. I want it to do really well so we can have more seasons. But if this is where you're going, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Don't don't give me any more. And I guess, you know, we, we covered a lot. And really all we're going to say is, you know, negative things about it. But I did want to touch upon, you know, before – uh, we get to the end here, the end of the show. Um, do you, so we see at the end, obviously, Anthony Mackie Takeshi sacrifices himself, um, and Quill Chris is, you know, off on her mission, blah, 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 and she's kind of seeing uh, Anthony Mackie Takeshi similar to how Takeshi was seeing Quill Chris in the first one. But then we see uh, Will Yoon Lee's Takeshi walking around. I mean, what what did you make of that ending? Are we going to focus on Will Yoon Lee's Takeshi, or are we going to focus on Quilcrest in season three? Because to me, it seemed like they were setting up as if we were going to now follow Quilcrest. See, I I thought differently because I I I remember when Dig was trying to uh, reboot Poe back up because uh, obviously Poe rebooted himself, so she was trying to get mm-hmm. him to remember. Um, there was like an AI program still alive, and I thought that AI program that was still alive was uh, was Kovac. Um, mm. So that's what made me think, oh, they're gonna put Kovac in another body. Um, it was a little I mean, confusing. 
I didn't know. I don't think they really specifically alluded to what it was, but to me, I'm like, I thought Poe found a way to extract Kovacs before, um, you know, he was ultimately destroyed. I think all that died was the sleeve. That's what I thought. I mean, I could easily be making this up, <laughs> um, but that's what I took from it because I'm like, I, I don't know if I'm interested in another season that doesn't have, like, the Kovac we've come to know that changes his sleeves. Um, if you're giving me the legitimate Kovac, I'm like, I don't really have any interest. Like, I, 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 don't, I don't really have any interest. I mean, I sat there and I told you, like, five different people I would like to see play Kovac um, next season. They can't do that if you're telling me that, oh, no, no, it's just Kovac. I'm like, if this is how it ends, you should just start a new story, uh, a new story of someone else. Um, because to me, I like the idea that each season there's a new, there's a new actor or a new actress. Um, but if you're telling me get used to the same one, I'm like, no, that's not what I signed up here for. Because well, uh, if that was the I... case, you should have just kept it as Joel Kinnaman. Well, to me, what I mean is, like, will you and Lee's, Kovacs is the one that, like, he's just now briefly met Quill Chris, so he doesn't have that history. But my whole thing is, like, we obviously see, and it's the same thing like Matt Murdock in the second season of Daredevil. You get this woman that comes in, and it's like all of their logic goes out the frickin' window, right? Um, So Takeshi obviously makes really stupid decisions when it comes to Quill Chris. Um, But then it doesn't pay off, right? Because even with him, he spends his whole life pretty much uh, now in search of this person. And when they get back together, she's like, we're no good for each other. You know, I'm the mission, and I got to keep doing this. And, you know, yeah, I love you, but, you know, we're not going to be together. And he's like, man, I just did all this shit, spent all this time, you know, after you. And so I'd like a Kovacs that doesn't necessarily hold a candle or hold a uh, quill press up on a pedestal so that maybe we can get a more focused storyline. That's more so what I mean. Obviously, I want him to change sleeves because that's the beauty of this world is that there can be different main characters that they're just playing the same character. So that's more so what I mean. Like that version of Takeshi that doesn't have necessarily the history that Anthony Mackie does. It's, listen, I'm with you, Tia, as long as he changes sleeves. That, like, that's honestly all I care about. That, to me, is so important. If he doesn't change sleeves, I, I'd i have to wait till I see the trailer, honestly. I, I won't say I'm not interested. I'll wait to see what it looks like they're trying to do, because um, I might like it. Um, but on the outside looking in, if he doesn't change sleeves, I mean, Tia, you, 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 we were texting each other. You saw how excited I was getting about other actors and actresses I thought could be Kovach. Um, so, well, I you think know. that I think right. that you should tell the audience uh, who you would like to see as Takeshi Kovach. Oh, okay. Um, let me pull up my list. All right, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. All right. Um, I was going because uh, again, I want star power. So I'm going with Daniel Wu. Um, Jason Statham. I actually went female with uh, Zhang uh, Zai. Um, I think she'd be freaking awesome. I also have Lucy Liu on here um, because I think one thing Lucy Liu has gotten too far away from is her roots, which is uh, fighting background. Those are the first few movies that really stuck out for her. Um, like Charlie's Angels, obviously. Um, Kill Bill, obviously. I'm like, yeah, get Lucy Liu back into that. Um, and then I told Tia before, my new golden child, freaking love him, Henry Golding. Um, I, I want you to get more noticeable actors, um, you know, b- bigger names, bigger names. Um, Henry Golding is an up-and-coming, uh, up-and-comer, but that kid's really going to take off soon. It, it, it'll only take one movie for that kid to really take off, I, I, I'm telling you. But I would really like to see... Um, either them go full female and maybe Lucy Liu take over, or you go the route of Daniel Wu, Jason Statham, or Henry Golding. I think between those three, this show will really take off. So much so, I guarantee you, like, someone was like, yeah, this should be a movie. Um, but that, that's what you should do. Um, and, and I think it needs star power like that. I told you that I love the idea of Lucy Liu. 
or even if you say don't get her in an acting capacity, she's been directing. So maybe even bring her on as a director for an episode or two. I think that would be really yeah. cool. Yeah. I I don't necessarily have, like, say, a list list, not that I'm, like, any that are I'm particularly serious of. Uh, I told you that I wouldn't have minded seeing Mustafa Shakir just because I think that he would have been able to capture some of that sarcasticness that um, we saw with uh, Joel Kinnaman. I think that Alexander Skarsgård would be a pretty cool um, one just because we saw how he was as Eric in True Blood, and I think that he would also be able to convey that pretty well. Besides, I don't really have anyone in mind because at this point I don't want to set expectations just because I was really disappointed in season two, but I love your list. Um, you know, Henry Golding would probably be a fantastic idea because he's new enough that he may want to get involved in a series instead of, say, a movie, but he's also well-known enough that he would carry that star power. So I really like that idea of Henry Golding um, becoming Takeshi, but it definitely needs to change. I really don't expect to see Anthony Mackie back as Takeshi. Yeah, that cannot happen under any circumstances. That cannot happen. (laughs) Does this make you a little worried for, say, the Falcon and Winter Soldier show, seeing how Anthony Mackie is now in more of a main star capacity? Or do you just think he wasn't a good fit for Takeshi? Um, no, the the way I view, here, here's the thing. He's supposed to be playing, obviously, because they're different people, it's going to be a little different, but he's ultimately, ultimately playing the exact same character Joel Kinnaman did. So I'm, I'm holding him to those expectations because I love season one. Um, no one's ever played Bucky before. I'm not Bucky. I'm sorry. No one's ever played Falcon before. So there is no level of expectation. So he's setting the level of expectation for the character. So I'm like, you can be as droll as you want, as boring as you want. There's no expectation. So, like, I just take what I, you know, what I get. Um, But the fact that I thought season one was so brilliantly done and Joel Kinnaman was such a standout, I wanted the acting to to match up. And it didn't. So I'm like, I, I I don't I don't really know. Like I mean, any any time I tell people I'm not a fan of Anthony Mackie, they always go, "You didn't see the Hurt Locker?" I'm like, "All right, but you know Anthony Mackie's been in other movies, right? Like not just Hurt Locker." Oh, you didn't, Wait, you didn't he was like in the Hurt Aven- Yeah, he was um, Jeremy Renner's. Not I don't know if he was his friend or the guy that was just working in the field with him, but he was in Hurt Locker. He's one of the main characters. I swear, I've seen that movie. And maybe it was just because I watched the movie before he was, you know, before I saw um, him in the Marvel Universe, because the Marvel Universe is what put me on to Anthony Mackie. So it might be one, and this happens, like I'll watch movies and then years later, you know, find out an actor and it's like, hey, they were in that movie. It's like, what? It's the same thing like, um, you know, Scoot McNary, right? I only got aware of him about like a year or so ago. But I've seen 12 Years a Slave. I've seen all these other movies. Like, oh, he was in it. Okay, okay. That makes sense now. All right. But um, so it could be, yeah. just be one of those things that just didn't register because I didn't know who the hell he was at that point. No. I mean, fair enough. I mean, fair enough. I I, I also wasn't really uh, that blown away by Anthony Mackie's performance in that. I also wasn't <laughs> that blown away by Jeremy Renner's um, but I'm just that that kind of guy. But um, no, I I mean I'm not a big Jeremy Renner fan. I'm not a big Jeremy yeah. Renner fan, so I, I guess you. yeah, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I I'm not either. But um, yeah. So I mean, him playing uh Falcon, there's no level of expectation. So you can do whatever he wants, and, and I'm fine with that. It's just when you play someone that I've seen before. Um, I, I kind of like in my mind, I'm like, all right, well, you should kind of beat to this drum. And it seemed like he played a whole different instrument. So I'm like, all right, you're supposed to be different because obviously you're two different actors, but you're still supposed to convey the sarcasm, the badassery, like all those different things that made Joel Kinnaman's uh, Kovac 
what it was, and I kind of felt like this didn't have any of it. Um, so, I mean, that was, that was my biggest thing. But, no, to answer your question, I'm sorry. You know how uh, long-winded I can be. I do not <laughs> think his poor performance in this will affect how I, um, how I like or dislike uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. And I'll say one last thing before I ask my last question. Um, I And I haven't watched it in some years, but I was actually a huge fan of the show Supernatural, right? And for anyone who's mm-hmm. watched Supernatural, that dealt with different actors playing the same characters because you have angels and demons and they can possess different actors. So you've had characters that have been played by like five different actors. And for the most part with most of them, it felt like the same person, even though it's been a different actor. Like, I'll tell you this, uh, Jared Padalecki, who's the main char- one of the main characters, he played Satan uh, for some time. And that a- actor was also, that character was also played by Mark Pellegrino. I swear it's the same person, even though it's two different actors. So it's like, that's what I expect when it comes to something like Altered Carbon for that same level. It doesn't matter that it's two different actors. It should feel like the same character, and this just didn't. But my one last question is, and I should have done this when we did Narcos Mexico Season 2. I just thought of it. But for Alter Carbon out for Season 2 out of 10, what would you rank this? Oh, um, easily a 5. Um, and that's mainly – and the 5 is only because of the few things that I did like. Um but yeah, I, I I'm very big on on acting and um, storytelling, and this just did not have a good enough story for me. Um, not one that was compelling enough for me to kind of feel like like this season being as bad as it was made me kind of glad that it wasn't more episodes. Uh, because I'm like, I don't really know if it would have had my attention for three more episodes or two more episodes. Um, I kind of felt like when it was it was done, it was time for it to be done. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'd say five, maybe Tia, um, out of ten. Yeah, um, I only said that maybe it could have done ten episodes just to stretch out the last few episodes of story that they were trying to convey. But I agree because I think I told you I started skipping at some point because I was just like losing interest very quickly. So I think that a 5 out of 10 is fair uh, for this show, um, strictly because only Poe and Miss Dig, if they weren't in it, if we didn't have that dynamic, because I didn't think we were going to have Poe originally uh, based on what had happened to him at the end of season one. Uh, but if mm-hmm. they weren't in it, it, uh, it easily could have gotten a 3 out of 10 from me. Uh, there was not a lot yeah. redeemable about this season. But, um, yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. As I said earlier, I tried to be a little bit more positive watching it originally. And even if in my review, I had given it a three out of five because um, I guess I was just trying to be really nice. But as we talk, it's like, wow, I really I can't find a whole lot of niceness to say about this. So this is essentially our review of Alter Carbon Season 2. Um, I've been seeing online that some of you guys really enjoyed this season. And if you did, that's, you know, kudos to you. I'm, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Um, I'm hoping for a stronger performance if there's a season three and a stronger writing team. Um, I should have looked and seen if there was a different writing team, but, um, yeah, they just got to fix that. But, uh, Joanne, before we wrap up, uh, let everyone know where, what can we find, what should we look out for. I know that you and Joelle just did a new episode about Much to Do About Nothing, which I believe is on, what the hell is it called? Oh, my Periscope. God, it was on something. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yes. Periscope. Um, thank you. Um, yes, we just did a new episode of Much Ado About Nothing, where we're streaming it differently, no longer on Facebook Live. Um, we are currently at um, close to 500 views um, for our wow. first episode on uh, Periscope. So thank everyone that's supporting. Um, please start hearting it if you like it. Even comment on it. 
Um, I know it's not live, but comment on it. Uh, you know, go to our YouTube. The lighting for our YouTube was horrible. That is our fault. We did not know it was going to look that bad because if you see the Periscope video, it looks way better than the YouTube one. Um, the YouTube one, as Martin pointed out, definitely did look like a hostage video. Um, it was not the best quality. Um, so huge shout out to Martin for that. Um, but yes, uh, we do have a lot of people heading to conventions if these conventions stand. Um, so stay tuned for all of the content there. I'm going to do my best to talk Tia into binge watching, um, God, Tia, what was that show I told you to watch? Oh, crap. I'm now completely forgetting what the name of it was. I'm not okay. I'm not okay with this. I'm not okay with this. Um... Please, Tia, watch that so we can do a review. That show is – I am not okay with this. Yes. I told you it's a short season. The episodes are about uh, 17 to 25 minutes long. It's not full hours. It's not 35 minutes, 45 minutes. Um, And I know AJ is going to be bugging us to do um, a review for uh, Castlevania Season 3. So we got to be on the lookout for that. But um, everyone, please make sure you guys are paying attention to Kind of Nerdy Girls, Cape and Castle, um, The Main Damies. Uh, they call this a movie. Um, also, Cena Nerd, um, everyone part of our Geek Vibes Nation family. Tia, I believe, has a few articles out. Um, Cannon broke news on The Flash and The Tomb Raider um, shooting news. So make sure you guys go check those out. Uh, but besides that, just make sure you guys are staying followed to all of our um, social media channels to see what we got coming. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I, I will definitely watch I Am Not Okay With This uh, because I need something new now to watch. So we'll get to that and see about reviewing that show. But please make sure that you check out this Sunday. We're doing the top 10. It's going to be the top 10 movies based on real life events. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, the main, yeah. And the main Danny also has uh, stranger Danies, which is their D and D podcast. And I know they're really yep. excited about that as well. And besides that, just make sure that you check us out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Periscope. We have all of our podcasts on the major sites, CastBox, iHeart, Spotify, iTunes. We're everywhere. So you can listen to us, read our articles wherever you may want to travel. But, yeah, Juan, thank you so much for joining me tonight for our review of Altered Carbon Season 2. And until next time, have a good night. Peace.